okay, grab something and get ready to write this number down. It's your one and only chance to be a millionaire. The number is 10, 10, 2000. Call now okay, and you can be a millionaire. Living the rest thing. of your life in luxury. But only if you call now. 10, 10, 2000. 10's <laughs> Late News with Tracy Spicer. Heading tonight's bulletin, a new drug row envelops Australian swim star Ian Thorpe. Queensland's by-election spark fresh debate over the GST and calls for a greater effort to fight the silent killer of Australian women. Good evening. First tonight, Australian swimming sensation Ian Thorpe at the centre of a drug test furor at the World Cup in Berlin. Thorpe and coach Don Talbot were involved in a standoff with officials over bungled drug testing procedures. It's a bungle that could bring Berlin's World Cup swim meet undone. FINA's drug testing procedures were not followed after a comedy of errors, one being the absence of tamper-proof containers for urine samples. As I'm told, the statement was, oh, don't worry, we'll have it here tomorrow and we'll put the samples in the bottles. Don Talbot, Ian Thorpe, American Lenny Kraselberg, two British athletes and a Croatian swimmer argued with officials for four hours. Finally, police stepped in, confiscating the samples. The police uh, agreed that they would keep custody of them and they were stapled in a bag. Swimming Australia says the tests can't be taken seriously. Those tests should be totally invalid. Australia's head coach isn't taking any chances, especially after a German trainer questioned Thorpe's ability to perform as well as he does without the use of drugs. Do you really think that in view of what happened during the week with one of your, your head coach accusing him of cheating that we're going to leave samples A and B that could be easily tampered with? If the farce is not fixed, Swimming Australia says it has no choice but to withdraw. Uh, our swimmers would swim in the heats and they would not contest the finals. Nonetheless, the torpedo is just trying to get on doing what he does best. Ian has handled it very well. He's, he's tired, mind you. You know, in the last uh, week or ten days, he's had about eight very hard swims and, and all of them have been exceptionally fast. Justin Wiley, 10 News. Thai police have charged an 18-year-old ethnic Chinese man with last week's attack on two Australian tourists in which one died. The arrest followed another identity lineup at a hospital in Chiang Mai where 25-year-old victim Sheree McFarlane had been moved to recover. Police say the man admitted the attack after being identified by Ms McFarlane. Her boyfriend, 23-year-old Kelvin Burke, died when he was shot in the head during the attack. Victorian Premier Steve Brax has warned nothing short of a full resolution of the state's crippling power dispute will avert government intervention tomorrow. Unions began day three of talks this morning, claiming Yalorn Energy had agreed to some of their demands, but contract labour remained a sticking point. Electrical Trades Union Secretary Dean Mile says the union will lose no matter what the government does. They don't believe the federal tribunal will give them a fair hearing, while being forced back to work would strip their only real bargaining tool. Public disquiet over the GST is being credited with Labor's big win in both Queensland by-elections yesterday. And state Liberals are warning their federal colleagues to get their act together. Labor's Mike Kaiser was saying thank you today to the battlers of Woodridge who've just elected him. Do you like a balloon? Last night there were wild scenes as he claimed victory. The member for Woodridge, Mike Kaiser. Yeah! Success for Joanne Miller in the other by-election in Bundamba meant Queensland's Labor government retained its one-seat majority. There wasn't much for former One Nation identity Heather Hill or the Liberals to celebrate. Labor says last night's vote is a warning to Prime Minister John Howard. People are angry about the GST. The people of Logan City and the people of Australia are waiting with their baseball bats for John Howard. The Queensland Liberals so, uh, agree that GST helps Labor. The, the GST, our oh, anti-GST um, factor was there. Dr well, Watson is warning his federal colleagues to get the tax behind them quickly. Period. Otherwise it's going to fester for some time. The Queensland opposition is now on election alert, claiming Premier Peter Beattie may call an early state poll to capitalise on GST anger. There will not be a state election before May 2001. 
I don't believe him. Mark Simmons, 10 News. And the Federal Labor Party has jumped on the Queensland win as a sign of things to come for John Howard, warning the GST will cost votes at the next election. Well, both Premier Beattie and the leader of the Liberal Party have said that the GST was a factor in the weekend's by-election results. Both of them are saying this is an unfair tax and it's hurting people. The only ones that still haven't got the message are John Howard and Peter Costello. A bizarre protest by illegal immigrants at the detention centre in Derby, Western Australia. Around a dozen of them have sewn their lips together to highlight what they regard as poor conditions in the camp. The men from the Middle East haven't sought medical help and vow to continue the protest until they're freed. People who are trying to uh, put pressure on us to release them into the community. They've come to Australia unlawfully um, and it's not uh, pressure to which we will succumb. The action follows news of a hunger strike by the 1,200 people in the Curtin Detention Centre. The boat people smuggling out a letter last Wednesday claiming they wouldn't eat until their situation was reviewed. Virtually on the eve of the Broadcasting Authority releasing its findings in the radio cash for comment scandal, it's been revealed talkback King John Laws tried to get his own slice of Olympic gold. His manager has admitted trying to sign up SOCOG as a sponsor. John Laws, the man with the golden tonsils spruiking for corporate mates from behind the golden microphone, revealed today his manager approached SOCOG to hire Laws to solve its public relations problems over Olympic tickets. This is Laws manager John Fordham, the man who set up Laws' lucrative cash for comment deals. The pitch for Olympic business made the same day Laws had bagged SOCOG, saying it needed a proven salesman. In a letter, Fordham said, in the radio and advertising industries, John Laws, of course, is widely acknowledged as the best. If you're interested in discussing the makeup of a John Laws endorsement agreement, I would be happy to oblige. But SOCOG wasn't interested in hiring Laws. At the time, it was having no trouble selling off huge numbers of Olympic tickets at inflated prices as part of its premium ticket program. The offer was rejected, Fordham didn't tell Laws about it either. And it wasn't raised at the Broadcasting Authority's cash for comment inquiry due to report this week. It's expected 2UE will be penalised by the ABA and new industry-wide regulations recommended to ban announcers from taking cash for comment. John Hill, 10 News. And still to come in 10's late news, Australia urged to boycott Austria's new government as protests continue and the battle to clear the worst snow slides in Alaska's modern history. The federal opposition has slammed the government for just watching the situation in Austria, where the far right half of the new coalition government is threatening to spark a European crisis. The nation is already...